But since we sat here from morning, you are the third person from Rift Valley who we are betting together with just one in the world. Uh, Honorable Peter, I, I know where I'm going. Uh, Peter, that one is not us. No, please, I, I please, know, please, I know where I'm going. Please direct the question that you want to as far as the assigned docket is concerned. Mbunge kutoka mrengo wa upinzani Peter Kaluma alijipata matatani baada ya kuashiria kuwa kulikuwa na ubagusi katika uteuzi wa makatibu hamsina moja walioteuliwa na Rais Ruto akieleza kuwa Rais aliwateua watu kutoka eneo anakoishi kuwa makatibu wa wizara tofauti. Mbunge huyo alielekeza swali hili kwa Aurelia Rono aliyeteuliwa kuwa katibu katika idara ya serikali kuhusu masuala ya bunge. Jana ilikuwa siku ya kwanza ya kamati ya bunge kuwapiga msasa makatibu hao ambapo walipata fursa ya kutetea uteuzi wao kuongoza baadhi ya idara za serikali. Rono congratulations on your nomination. I'm struggling like uh, many Kenyans to understand the mandate of your of this department. I, I understand it is newly created. You are aware of the provisions of Article 125 of the Constitution. Essentially, the uh, the powers of Parliament as a whole, all through its committees to summon anybody, including ministers. It is an enforcement mechanism given by Kenyans to Parliament. And to order them to do whatever Parliament wants them to do. And so you've heard of cases where the Senate more so has been even levying fines, or meeting up fines on ministers who failed to attend there is power to summon any minister. You are also aware that in the structure of the executive, there will be a cabinet policy and each ministry, the state department, will originate some bids, they have the power. Of course, under the current constitution, through the majority leader, because bids have to come through some member of parliament. And then questions will be asked here, all petitions raised by members on behalf of the people, and they'll be directed to specific government departments. And when the responses come, the follow-up mechanism also has a pathway in the constitution and the standing orders to the various government ministries, to the specific government department, to the specific um, government sector. The government can su uh, summon and enforce its resolutions in that manner. <coughs> Makes me wonder, as other Kenyans, what you be doing. Are you suggesting if, uh, for instance, the Department of Interior to present a bill, maybe a rumor bill, and there is a lapse, you follow it up with you? And, and, and what does that uh, do to the latitude given to Parliament under Article 125? In terms of delegated legislation, in virtually all laws, you get regulation-making powers. And we have a law called the Statutory Instruments Act with very expansive provisions in terms of our parliament through the relevant committee and delegated legislation uh, approves or announces those legislations. So what are you saying you would be, the, the department would be doing in that context? We'll be going to ministries to make regulations or doing what exactly? <laughs> in this circle of things, I, I don't understand. That is number question. So it's, it's about understanding what you'll be doing. Okay? But uh, the last uh, question in terms of clarification, because you are very qualified, you want to, to be sure as a committee you are going to be meaningful with this intelligence, you know, to Kenyans. These values you are referred to under Article 10 include a value on inclusiveness or inclusivity. 
equity and fairness. And then when you go to Article 232, you have spoken about integrity, accountability, transparency. But there is something in 232, 1H and I, talking about representation of Kenya's diverse communities and affording adequate and equal opportunities for appointments, training and advancement at all levels of public service, with members of all ethnic communities. I know this may not concern you, but since we sat here from morning, you are the third person from Rift Valley we are betting together with just one more. Uh, honorable Peter, I, I know where I'm going. Uh, Peter, that one is not us. No, please, I, I please, know, please, I know where I'm going. Please direct the question that you want to, as far as the assigned docket is concerned. Mm. That is way above her pay grade, uh, and, she, know, I, and she is not likely to have answers mm. to that. I know uh, please I'm going. focus your question. <laughs> I know where I'm going. In fact, uh, Chair, yeah. if I may also because, uh, just a minute and through, through the chair. Through the, through the chair. chair. Just a while ago, Kaluma. You raised a point over here. About uh a peers who was mentioned. You know, coming out we have better direct uh, nominees. You know. That is insinuating in a bad way. And I think in the chair, that is completely out of order. It is the chair to make that ruling. Uh, Peter, please focus your question to why the nominee is before us. There are other things she cannot answer. Uh, did you say the chair has made a ruling? <laughs> or you take it the the I've said it is the chair to make the rule. Yeah, yeah, chair, yes. chair. You, you know you are curtailing my train. <coughs> okay. There yes. are things we understand. You cannot limit a member. Okay, Peter Karuma. I have not, I've not put the question. I was okay, laying back. Listen, please. Eh? We know that uh, it is for the good of all of us. The questions are good. They are necessary. But uh, can you just try to? Be precise to the point, to the question, and uh, mm -hmm. she'll get time to respond what she can, what is above her and not within her mandate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we can able to get also time for other members to. Yeah, because uh, uh, according to, you know, uh, on the Canada Academic Day, I mean, I think. Uh, we are trying to look the suitability of the candidate, I say. Yeah. Before us. Yeah, Chair, my understanding was that you can look at the candidate and you can also look at the approval of all of them on this issue. Mm -hmm. If you are of a contrary view, Chair, that is your view. But the question I was asking you, that there is a concern in me and several Kenyans that the composition of the nominations does not adhere to this point of order, Kaduma, of you are a senior service. council, you are a vet, you are a senior in here. Can you address the candidate with the chair? You know it. You have been here quite enough to know this. And let me repeat it. If not that now, address the nominee through the chair and stick to the rule of engagement. Please. Chair, chair do I let you ask the question for me? Okay, ask it for me. Okay. Who, who is next on the line? Me. Okay, please answer. Uh, not you, uh, Fat Fatima, your question is related to what you are raised. In my finance uh, background, I know I would propose that these spending bills are put as a charge in the, ne in the next budget estimates, but audit must be done. To ensure that whatever you are paying, whatever you are clearing, is right. So audit has to be done, and then put as a charge in the next uh, budget. We have uh, PFM regulations that clearly, if we strictly follow, 
we are not going to fall into this trap the way we are now. Another strategy that we need to have is to prioritize procurement. We need to prioritize procurement as a government and ensure that we don't give a contract or a tender. No government entity should give a tender or a contract for purchase of goods or services if there is insufficient budgetary allocation. If we do that, we are going to reduce the spending bills that is really disturbing us. Baadhi yao kama Julius Korir aliyeteuliwa kuongoza idara ya masuala ya mawaziri alijipata kwa shida kueleza ni vipi shilingi takriban bilioni saba za Kenya zilitoweka akihudumu katika wizara ya fedha. Mahakama ya Leba mnamo Jumanne lilisimamisha kwa muda kupigwa msasa kwa makatibu wakuu na wabunge wa Kisupiri kusikilizwa kwa kesi ya kupinga mchakato huo. Jaji Nzioka Makao alisimamisha kwa muda zoezi la uhakiki kufuatia kesi iliyowasilishwa na chama cha wanasheria Kenya. Jaji Makao aliagiza LSK kwa dumia wahusika na akasema kuwa kesi itasikilizwa mnamo Novemba tarehe 21. Katika kesi hiyo LSK inadai kuwa uteuzi wa makatibu hao hamsina moja haukufuata utaratibu na kuwa makatibu wana dosari hawa afiki kiwango cha katiba kesi nyingine iliyowasilishwa na mfanyibiashara Steven Kariuki Maina akipinga mchakato wa uhakiki pia imepangwa kusikizwa mbele ya mahakama ya leba Maina anadai kuwa mmoja wa hao makatibu Sylvia Nasela Muhoro hakuwa miongoni mwa wale waombaji 585 waliohojiwa na tume ya utumishi wa huma kati ya mwezi wa Oktoba tarehe 12 hadi tarehe 22. Maina anasema mchakato mzima ni kinyume cha katiba na naitaka mahakama kutangaza kuwa ni ubatili. One of the functions of the office is that you work for the welfare of parliamentarians. <laughs> yes. What is your plan about that issue to make sure that SRC does not play but play around with members of parliament? and the affairs of parliament. Point of order chair. Nikiripotia IOTV kutoka Nairobi, Kenya. Jina langu ni Ronald Sang.